Be bold, be brave, be extraordinary, be vulnerable, be real, be curious, be true, be you. Welcome to Trusting Your Gut with world-class energy intuitive Katherine McIntosh, a show designed to awaken you to enjoy the process of evolving, have fun along the way, and learn to listen to those silent in-between moments. You are the expert of your own life, and nobody knows more about the next steps to take in your journey than you. So please, listen to your gut and discover what's waiting for you to explore. Here is your host, Katherine McIntosh. All right, my magical friends. So welcome to another week's episode. Today, we are going to be talking about wounds. And you know, it's so funny. We go, oh no, wounds, my trauma, my pain. And, um, you know, we have this really interesting relationship with our wounds. And so often when we're trying to make sense of the pains of our past, of the traumas, of the way we were raised, we all have these memories and the body always remembers. But here's the deal is that most often the head makes up the story of the wound, right? It remembers what it wants to remember. And so we sometimes will go around telling stories of our past of what might not actually have happened. And the more we talk about our wounds, the more we make them a problem. And so as a energy intuitive and someone who works with bodies and energy and really all things on scene for a living, uh, it's like I've never been able to get someone to the root of a transformation by focusing on the wound because usually the wound isn't the thing like it's it's kind of hard to explain but it's like so i look at people who have been diagnosed i recently was working with someone who was diagnosed with um hypothyroid they had low blood pressure high cholesterol like all these things and they were having some health issues like energy fatigue exhaustion and in the past, when I've worked with people, specifically women with a low thyroid, so I believe it's hypo, not hyper, um, I found that the root cause of hypothyroid is actually a lack of self-esteem somewhere in their lives, a lack of self-worth. And when we got to the root of changing their self-worth, then everything changed. And so often we're like, I have this diagnosis, but labeling something as a diagnosis only solidifies it as a problem 90% of the time, or even more than 90% of the time, the diagnosis that you have isn't actually the problem you have. Like people say they have a money problem. And I'm like, no, you have a receiving problem, right? People say they have a weight problem. And I say, no, you have a judgment problem. And so when we try to heal ourselves and become the best version of ourselves, and here's what I think is that Yes, healing sometimes is uncovering some painful experiences from our past. Absolutely. But usually the thing that creates the quickest healing is to get yourself to a place where you raise your vibration, where you increase your light, where you increase your joy, where you focus on what is working in your life instead of what isn't working in your life. And all of a sudden you become more like energized your the cells in your body become more light there's less density and that lightness pushes out the darkness it pushes out the wounds and it pushes out the pain and so this week i was working with a group of people um an online course i created called the people pleasing class or people pleasing the class in this class i believe that people pleasing is the root cause of most of our pains and problems, most of our emotional heartache, most of our mental, most of our physical, most of our financial, because when we're 
stuck in trying to make others happy, we forget to focus on ourselves. And yes, being selfish, I know that sounds crazy, but here's the deal is if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't take care of others. You can't share your light. You can't spread joy in the world if you're completely depleted. And so as someone who's worked in the healing industry for over 20 years, really 25 now or more, if I don't take care of myself, like I take care of myself. Hi, sweet Marsha. I take care of myself pretty religiously. And if I don't, I can feel it. And it's not good for anybody. It's not good for my son. It's not good for my friends. It's not good for my business. It's not good for my clients. And so I'm pretty adamant on being selfish with taking time to take care of myself. And that could look like skiing in the mountains, going to yoga class, meditating, right? Getting good night's sleep, drinking lots of water, being very vigilant with my high vibration thoughts instead of getting caught into low vibration. And so here's what I think is really fascinating. And hopefully if you're listening, you can be like, whoa, right? And I want you to see if you can hear this and hopefully I can speak English enough to, for it to make sense. But most of us, when we're stuck in a problem, so let's say we have, you know, I had someone this morning was like, oh my gosh, I think I need to go to the dentist. I have massive nerve pain. And I was like, go to the dentist, right? It's not just a spiritual thing to look at. It might be spiritual on some level, but it also might be, you might need to go to the dentist, right? Like I, you know, when tooth pain is, is awful. And so so one of the things we look at is when we have these pains, it immediately drops our vibration. And when we go, oh my God, something's wrong. What's wrong? How did I do this wrong? Where did I go wrong? Uh, and then it brings up pains of the past, right? Immediately you've put yourself into a low vibration. Now check this out. You cannot solve the problem that you're currently having if you're trying to solve it from the lack that you're in, right? So to check this out with weight. If somebody is constantly struggling with their body image and self-esteem and they'd like to lose weight, but they have a 20 year story of their mother putting them on diet pills, of them being big boned as a kid, of being voluptuous and really sexy and that being wrong. And so then they created a a problem. They started to dim their light and dim their bodies. And then they went to food for sort of emotional relief, right? That's a 20 year challenge. And that's 20 years of living at a low vibration when it comes to relating to your body. So most people, when they think they need to lose weight, they are already in a judgmental state. They're already in a fear state. They're already in a not enough or lack state. And so then they'll seek a solution, but they're seeking a solution from the vantage point and from the perspective that something's wrong. You can't solve a problem from thinking something's wrong, okay? You have to invite in a new energy. And so if you're looking for a diet or a solution to your body from a low vibration state, you will attract low vibration solutions that don't actually work. And so it just keeps you in the hamster wheel of thinking you have the problem or you are the problem. And I see it so often where we might be troubled or discouraged or in pain or dealing with job stuff or work stuff or financial security. And that energy can be quite depleting. And our instant gut reaction is to go, let me get rid of this. Let me heal this. Let me change this. Let me get rid of it for good. And what I found is the only way to truly transform it is to not focus on the problem you think you're having, but to open the door to everything that is working in your life, right? To invite a high vibration, energetic, mental, emotional state 
so that when you're looking for the solution, you're inviting high vibration solutions that will actually open the door to the healing or the transformation that you're looking for. It's quite profound, quite profound. And so yesterday in the, the people pleasing the class, we were having this conversation and it was like light bulbs went off and we were talking about unworthiness and someone said, wow, I realize that I keep trying to get rid of unworthiness, but maybe I actually like unworthiness. And so I asked them, well, what is it? What does it give you? And I looked at my own life and I'm like, oh, I keep saying I don't like rejection, but guess what? I, I kind of, I almost even don't want to say this out loud. It makes me want to laugh and cry at the same time is I've used rejection in my life. So letting somebody reject me, getting rejected from a job, getting rejected from a client, getting rejected from, you know, maybe a love interest, like, or, but I've constantly forced people to reject me because I'm functioning from rejection being a low vibration. And so what I looked at is like, oh, I actually like rejection. And I asked, what does rejection give me? And I, and the, I don't even want to say this out loud, but I'm gonna. I've used rejection so that I don't have to blame myself. I can blame others when it doesn't go the way that I want it to, right? So if I get rejected from a job, I can blame the job right? If I get rejected from a partner, I can blame the partner, right? Oh, they cheated on me. Blame them instead of take ownership for where I created that disconnect or that relationship or that, you know, conflict in the first place. And so then we took it a step further and we started looking at, okay, let's look at fear. Let's look at judgment. Let's look at unworthiness. Let's look at rejection. Let's look at abandonment. And it made me realize that if you take the world population, we're looking at about 8 billion people on the planet. And those 8 billion people, majority of them have some form of wounding in their world. Fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of unworthiness, just fear in general, um, you know, not enough. I don't matter. Nobody hears me. I never get what I want. I'm too much. I'm too obnoxious. I'm too loud. I'm not enough. I'm too demanding. So we create these stories and then we go, oh, the way to heal it so let's take fear, for example. The way to heal fear is to get rid of fear. But there's 8 billion people on the planet, and I don't know many that aren't having some form or version of fear in some way. And so you can't actually get rid of the energy because you get rid of it. It comes boomeranging right back because you're an emotional, intelligent, aware being. And just like elephants, elephants are aware of up to 8,000 miles around them, right? So when the tsunami in Indonesia happened, I think back in 2004, somewhere in there, the elephants went to high ground. They knew three days before that the tsunami was coming. So they went to safety. And your physical body is a lot like the vibrational awareness of an elephant. Your body is aware of sometimes up to eight to 10,000 miles around you at all times. A couple of years ago, about maybe eight years ago, I was in Rome and I was walking the streets of Rome and all of a sudden I got aware of my dad, like hardcore aware of my dad. And I was like, hey dad, you okay? Right? Not, not on the phone, just energetically said hi to him. And I went, I almost got like sick and nauseous. So I, I was walking in the streets of Rome and I like almost couldn't walk anymore. I got really lightheaded and I sat down at a cafe and all of a sudden my mom calls and she's like, your dad is in the hospital. He's had a heart attack and a stroke. <laughs> and I was like, got it. I was aware of my dad. I've been aware of natural disasters in other parts of the world. And so our bodies are, are aware 
of up to 10,000 miles around us at all times. Some people might be more aware, but if you're trying to get rid of fear and you're aware of 10,000 miles around you, there's probably, you know, millions of people in those 10,000 miles around you that are functioning from fear. So then you pick up the fear thinking it's yours. So you actually can't get rid of these low vibration sensations, emotions, and feelings. We cannot get rid of it. We cannot get rid of fear. But what we can do to really truly transform our wounding is we can change our relationship to fear. So I took this a step further in my own life. And yesterday I was looking at, oh my gosh, one of the things that I tend to, to feel is when, when there are certain situations in my life, I end up feeling like I'm walking on eggshells. And with my family in particular, my family of origin, there has been a lot of times where I'm like, oh my God, I'm walking on eggshells around my mom. Oh my God, I'm walking on eggshells around my brother, right? And I would walk on eggshells and then I would always blame them instead of go, oh, what in me can I change? And I looked, I said, what do I like about walking on eggshells, right? What do I like about it? I was like, oh get to blame them. Oh, it keeps me in the drama. It keeps me thinking I have a problem so that I can reject me, right? All these dynamics. And so if you're out there listening and you're dealing with anxiety, you're dealing with fear, maybe you have some chronic pain, you haven't been able to yet change or transform. Um, maybe you've been suffering for a long time with your body image or your weight or depression, you name it, right? The wound can't heal. Hear me out here. The wound can't heal if you're trying to get rid of the wound, right? Which kind of like puts me out of a job and in the best way possible. The wound can't heal if you're trying to get rid of it. The wound only heals when you change your relationship to it. And so yesterday when I looked at, oh my God, I like walking on eggshells. I say I hate it, but there's something I like about it because I keep recreating it. I keep choosing it. I keep feeling it. And so, excuse me. Ooh. No energy on that. It's like when I do healing work, I'm always yawning, but the wound can't heal if you're trying to get rid of it. The wound can only heal if you change your relationship to it. So for those of you out there who are suffering with anxiety, what if you didn't make yourself wrong? What if that anxiety was the universe's way of trying to give you information? And so whenever I look at a pattern or an energy or a disconnect or a lack or a frustration or something that isn't working in my life, it's like, okay, my belly's going crazy, or I have this massive headache or my jaw really hurts. What, and you know, for me, I rarely have body stuff because I'm always working with body. So my body rarely hurts, but sometimes it gets tired, right? sometimes it needs a little rest. And so if we look at, wow, what is, you know, my tooth pain, what's the information that my body's trying to give me? What's the information of the anxiety? So I believe, and I've talked about this in previous episodes, is anxiety is just suppressed awareness. So most people don't want to know that they're aware of up to 10,000 miles around them at all times, right? They don't want to know. They're like, mm, I'm, I'm anxiety. But if you look at it, like anxiety didn't used to exist when people were walking the earth and connected to the land and connected to the cycles of life and the seasons of life. Depression and anxiety started to really like take trend when we're stuck in our phones, when we're not self-caring, when we're not self-regulating our nervous system, when we're not living 
to our greatest possibility. And so whenever there's something coming up, it's always like, great, what is this? And what is the information trying to contribute? Right? So hypothyroid might try to be contributing that you actually have a capacity to be brilliant, to really honor and trust and grow your self-worth, but you might not be in your greatest state. You know, it's like relationships. A lot of people stay in relationships even when they're suffering and unhappy and they stay for millions of reasons. And the more they stay, the sicker or more depressed or more anxiety ridden they get pretty fascinating. And so I know my own journey of being 26 years old, 27 years old, and getting really, really sick to the point where doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I had been interested in the healing field, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure. I was doing some stuff, but I wasn't being in the world in the way that I am now. And after nine months of not being able to solve my problems, feeling some days like I was going to die, literally, like couldn't get out of bed, stuck in fetal position, pretending that life was okay, trying to work, trying to hold my marriage together. Um, I went to a healer and she put one hand on my sacrum and one hand on my belly. I was fully clothed. She asked, what does my gut know? what do I know? What does my belly know? What does my intuition know? And it was like, for the first time I saw that I didn't feel safe in my marriage and I kind of knew it, but I wasn't willing to admit it. And so my body was breaking down. I was searching for a diagnosis because if I could get the diagnosis, then I could get the medication, then I could get the, the help, then I could get the information I thought I needed. But here's the thing. The information we need isn't in a diagnosis. It's in the body's ability to communicate and our ability to listen to what our body's saying. And so when my body loudly proclaimed, I'm not safe, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up to be abused. I didn't sign up to get cheated on. I didn't sign up to work a hundred hours a week so he could go out drinking every night. Like I didn't sign up for that. And so I had to admit to myself what I knew walking down the aisle years prior, which is, oh, I shouldn't do this. Shouldn't marry this man, right? but I was a people pleaser at the time, felt bad for everyone that had come to visit to watch the wedding, felt bad for his family. And so I said yes to marry him, marrying him for his family, not for me, not for my joy, not for my health. And so when I realized that, oh yeah, I've been needing to walk away from him for a long time, it was like this giant relief to my body and 50% of my symptoms within one hour disappeared. Now I'd spent nine months, doctor's offices, you know, prodded, poked, scans, you know, I think I would, saw like seven or eight or nine different doctors and no one could figure it out. And the reason why they couldn't, the reason why they couldn't, is because the sickness that my body was experiencing was caused by not being connected to my emotions, by not being connected to my truth. And so emotions are energy in motion. And if you allow yourself to go through the emotion of depression, the emotion of fatigue, the emotion of, excuse me, no energy on this, <laughs> the emotion of sadness, and you can really go through it, not from let me analyze it, but let me let it move through me. Energy in motion, it just wants to move through, 
right? That's like watching the ocean waves crash and you try to grab a wave and like solidify it, right? Like, let me package up this wave and keep it in a wave form. Well, the minute you try to solidify it, it turns to flowing water, right? You can't. And yet for some weird reason, we've been trying to take these energies, these emotions in consciousness that are energies in motion, and we've been trying to solidify them. It's kind of insane if you think about it. Your body is this like living, breathing, mm conscious machine and it is designed to wake you up to enjoy living in a body on this earth at this time period right and we've been told that sadness is wrong depression is wrong fear is wrong so let's get rid of it but guess what you can't get rid of it you have to change your relationship to it so if you get yourself in a situation where fear arises instead of trying to get rid of the fear oh get rid of it it's not mine get rid of it it's not mine get rid of it it's not mine instead you go huh fear i'm gonna let that one sink in Ah, fear. Ooh, yeah, I guess I like fear because it keeps me in mediocrity. It keeps me safe in the sense that I don't have to lose my my family, right? And each of you is going to have a very different version of how this shows up for you. Hmm. But the moral is your wounds. nothing wrong with them. And they really truly want to be, you know, transformed and changed. So we're going to take a little commercial break and we'll be back on the other side to talk more about transforming your wounds. Om Times TV. Do you trust you? Do you trust your body? What if the key to unlocking the weight, pain, suffering, fear, anxiety, addictions, traumas, and sorrows was already inside of you? Learn to love the skin you are in so you can create the body, business, and life you love. Everyone always says you can't explain what Catherine does. You just have to experience it. From Hollywood actors to New York Times best-selling authors to some of the world's wealthiest and most successful, no two experiences are the same. For private sessions, online courses, live events, and the latest book Jack Canfield calls Game Changer and should be required reading for everyone, go to katherinemackintosh.com. K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E-M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H dot com. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Own Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Own Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Own Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Own Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Own Times radio and TV networks, You become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times. Open yourself to the possibilities. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? 
support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. All right, so welcome back. We are gonna dive into a little bit of logistics of how this works for you. So for those of you out there that have been trying to navigate your anxiety or navigate your depression or navigate fear or navigate worry or navigate stress, um, you know, we take live callers. I'd love to do, if anyone wants to call in and wants to explore how to take the, the emotion that you've been trying to get rid of and how do we transform it? Um, if we don't have live callers, I'll just kind of walk through and give examples. But if you'd like to call in and like to have me contribute to supporting you in your journey, you can call us at 202 570 Seven zero five seven live callers welcome two zero two five seven zero seven zero five seven and so you know let's just take an example of how this works so oh my goodness yeah it's funny when we when I start talking about certain things that have to do with healing, that have to do with transformation, that have to do with consciousness, you know, sometimes I'll yawn a lot because what we're doing is releasing information. And one of the things that I didn't know until recently is a yawn also releases stuck energy out of the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is kind of back where the occiput bone is in the back of the head. And that vagus nerve is responsible for regulating the parasympathetic nervous system. And so the parasympathetic nervous system regulates and operates and is responsible for maintaining the health of your immune system right? So your energy levels, it's also, and also your ability to fight off viruses and foreign elements, right? So we've got, um, the, oh, sorry, the, the nervous system, or sorry, the, the, oh my gosh, the immune system. It's also responsible for heart health, right? So when your heart is fully like engaged, alive, all of those things, right? The heart will pump fresh blood through the, the whole body. The heart also allows for fresh oxygen to flow. When fresh blood is pumping, the liver runs better, the spleen runs better, the kidneys run better. And when you have all of your organs moving, working together, communicating to each other, it's quite profound, right? So letting that move through you, right? And then the third thing that it regulates, so it regulates the immune system, the heart health, and the gut health. And so your good gut microbiome, your intestines, your ability to digest. And we're not just talking about digesting food, we're talking about digesting emotions, digesting feelings, digesting lack, whatever it is. And so you know, I, I love that, that there is a way, but here's the deal. When your parasympathetic nervous system is off, your immune health is off, which makes you more susceptible to sickness, to viruses, to the common cold, right? When your, uh, heart health is off, it definitely makes you susceptible and when your gut health is off, but here's the deal, when it's off, all of a sudden you're not calm in your nervous system and you're in fight or flight. And when you're in fight or flight, it's very challenging to heal the thing that you came here to heal. Pretty crazy. So... With that being said, what if there's nothing wrong with you? What if there is no problem to solve? And what if there is nothing to fix? What if you are exactly where you need to be right now? What if you don't need to get rid of fear? 
What if you could say hi to it? What if you don't need to get rid of feelings of shame or not worthy? Right? What if you, you know, the, all the things that we try to get rid of, they never actually leave. They don't. And so now if you've got something like fear running in your system, fear of what other people think of you, and you're like, how do I get rid of it? How do I get rid of it? How do I get rid of it? Now you've focused all your attention on the exact thing that you're trying to get rid of. So instead, what you want to do is you want to transform it by like, oh, fear, hi, you're a very familiar energy in my world. Oh, you're an old friend. Wow. I used fear fear, right, to, to propel myself forward. So when I was, um, my son was two weeks old, uh, my husband at the time, he quit his job and we needed to make money and we needed to make money fast. And we didn't really have savings. We didn't really have much to go off of. So it was pretty scary. That fear of the unknown wasn't a problem. It was a catalyst to get me to start my own business. It was a catalyst for me to get in motion, energy in motion to do something. And so a lot of times these energies that we might label as negative or wrong or bad are really just energies in motion that are trying to contribute forward momentum into your universe. Right? As I say in my classes, we're like mind blown. And lately in all my classes, we've been having these really cool conversations and people are starting to see specific transformations. You know, we do a lot of nervous system work. We do a lot of parasympathetic nervous system work because I believe in the power of using your body to elevate your vibrations so you can get rid of your old wounds. Really, really, truly. And so you might want to look at, okay, what is the fear trying to contribute to me? Right? And you can just close your eyes. What is the fear trying to contribute to me? And just wait for an energy. You don't need an answer. What is fear trying to contribute to me? And when you do that, you will begin to open the door to allowing yourself to change your vibration. So instead of like, I need to get rid of fear, low vibration. Oh, what is this fear teaching me? What is it trying to contribute to me? And a lot of times it's like, don't be scared. Don't be afraid. You'll be okay. Life will be okay. Hmm. And so it's a really powerful message for all of you out there. When it comes to your wounding, the quickest way to transform your wounding is to get into a high vibration state, to go big. And going big can look like anything for you. Absolutely anything. So my magical friends. There we go. You want to get rid of that witch, but not get rid of it. You just want to transform it. So everything is information, right? The person who cuts you off driving to work information, the, <laughs> the, like yesterday I went to get my nails done and they charged me more than they ever have. Cause the owner's out of town. And I was like, I never pay that much for my nails. And she's like, well, no, I charge you all the time that much. And I was like, no, don't pay that. Right. Information. 
information and we can decide, do we want to use that information to become a victim, to tell and regurgitate regurgitate stories of our wounds? Or do we want to look at that information and go, so let me give an example. We'll go back to yesterday's class. And this one was like, oh my God, I've used unworthiness. And then I've like tried to like get rid of unworthiness by making my business successful. And as long as my business is successful, then I can pretend that I've healed my unworthiness. Well, she's been having some interesting things happen in her business. And she goes, oh my God, unworthiness is in my business too. And I said, I said, what if you take the pressure off of your business needing to be what it is? What if you don't use your lack of unworthiness or lack of worthiness, your unworthiness, what if you take the pressure off of your business? Because right now you're like, your business is your proof that you're worthy. Your business is your proof that you're worthy. Your business is your proof that you're worthy, right? Because you're making money, you're gaining new clients, and you're like, yep, I'm see, I'm worthy. People think I'm important, right? And, and so... I said to her, how much of your energy have you tried to use your business to validate your feelings of insecurity around your youth and she, or around your um, unworthiness? And she was like, oh my God, <gasps> like everything. And I said, so what if you took the pressure off your business? What if it could be unworthy? What if you could be unworthy? What if you could be you know, in fear? What if you could be in lack, not from it's a problem, but from I surrender and something else is possible. And so my friends, for every emotion you have, it's energy in motion designed to open you, to awaken you, to contribute to you, right? There's no right, no wrong here. But here's the deal. If you catch yourself going, oh, I need to get rid of that. I want you to take a step back and go, huh, I wonder what this energy, what information is it giving me? And what would it like to contribute? And here's the thing. When we look at it, most of the time, these feelings we want to avoid, these emotions we want to pretend don't exist, right? What we're actually doing is letting it contribute to us in a completely different form. Yeah. So that's all we have for you guys today. I'm so grateful that you choose to join me every week. If the show contributes to you, send us a message. Please feel free to share it wherever you find it. You can subscribe to the channel, subscribe to our, Inst our YouTube channel, and uh, subscribe to Facebook and stay tuned for every show every week. And if you ever have a topic that you want me to talk about, right? bring it on, baby. I really do love exploring this idea that, you know, we're these human bodies having quote unquote, a human experience, but we are definitely not from this world. And those of you that listen to my show, you know, you're not from this world, right? And so it's up to us to, instead of try to fit into the mold or, you know, like just take the status quo as is, you came here to be a rebel. You came here to dance, to smile, to have laughter, to have joy, to have connection, to have intimate conversations. And uh, you didn't come here for a mediocre life, right? As my yoga teacher Coco says, he goes, you came here for a fantastic life. You came here to live the best life Ever. And when you function from that high vibration perspective, guess what? Those low vibrations, they become irrelevant. They don't match your energy, right? Those high vibrations invite you into a different world. So I want to thank you all for listening, tuning in every week. I hope our show is a contribution. And as always, continue staying true to you. Thank you.
Catherine is not a medical practitioner nor a licensed therapist. She has strong opinions and will express them and truly believes that you are your best advocate for any and every area of your life. If you need medical advice, please consult your physician.